hey, well, he's in and I have some time off. I'm on leave and I'm doing more while I'm off than just growing out my beard that I'm going to eventually have to cut off. But I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm going to continue this green to gold series. I brought on some very special guests that came on to share their stories. So definitely take a look at those testimonials if you haven't already and let me know if it's insightful or helping you in any way. I brought on a couple drill sergeants, a first sergeant with over 20 years before they switched over through the green to gold active duty option. Talked to a service member who had zero college, zero formal education and switched over, transferred all of his JST, his joint service transcript, and he was able to get accepted into green and gold. I most recently talked to a newly commissioned second lieutenant who almost didn't commission altogether, had to stay at school for an additional year, and his story is just incredible. So I bring that up because if they can do it, why not you? That You got to look at yourself in the mirror. And you have to say, why not me? If, if Chris can do it, I certainly can do it, and I believe that. Um, and I bring that up because you got to stay motivated. A lot of this stuff is going to get tedious. This video is even going to be tedious at times because I'm going to go and I'm going to go into the handbook and we're going to look at everything. The eligibility requirements and eligibility phase one, phase two. And don't get discouraged along the way. So many people have gone and they've, they've done it. In fact, I'm going to be bringing on more guests. So if you have recently been accepted. First of all, congrats. That's a big deal. But if you would like to come on and share your story, let me know and I'll get it set up. I think that it will motivate a lot of people to keep going. Yeah. So before we go any further, uh, I do want to shout out uh, a, a new subscriber. Shout out to you, Courtney. Thank you so much for subscribing. And then we have a comment. Hey, brother, I believe I served with you in 5101, Eagle Assault all the way. Yeah, Dominique, we did serve together. I got on my 5101 zip now. So Air Assault, baby, screaming eagles. All right, hey, so this is directly from U.S. Army Cadet Command Green to Gold Facebook page. They say, hello to all. We just wanted to remind those of you considering applying for Green to Gold this year that the application window opens 12 June 2023. What is green to gold if you're listening or watching this for the and you have no clue you're just like hey i'm going to try my luck in competing in this green to gold thing here's the mission the mission of green to gold active duty option is a two-year program that provides eligible active army enlisted soldiers an opportunity to complete their first bachelorette degree or first graduate degree and earn a commission as an officer So in this video or this episode, if you're listening audio through podcast form, I will be attempting to do a complete green to gold guide. I will cover general information about green to gold, eligibility, ineligibility, phase one requirements, phase two requirements. This video, bottom line up front, will be long. So skip forward. <laughs> to the sections that you need. If you need everything, just watch the entire thing. But feel free. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, the Army took my feelings a long time ago. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you skip forward. But you will hurt my feelings if you watch this video and you don't subscribe. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything that we are doing on this channel. I will be using the Green to Gold Handbook, the ADO Handbook. And that should be your Bible during this process this you should carry this with you everywhere you should have a physical copy and a digital copy with you at all times this should be an inspectable item um, i will do a lot of reading from the handbook and it's not to insult you at all you're smart all right i get it you don't need me to read something that you can read for yourself but i'm doing this to ensure that the most accurate incredible information is being put out all right, so let me go ahead and get started. So right here on Google, I just type in Army Green to Go Booklet 2023. Click on this first tab here, and it's going to take me to 
Cadet Command's homepage. And this is eventually where you will access your portal and you will upload, upload all of your documents. Some useful information on this page. You have top benefits of doing green to gold. If you didn't know, green to gold allows you to receive your current pay and allowances while in the program. If you're like me and you're you, I was a specialist promotable, so I got paid as a specialist. If you are um, a sergeant first class, you're going to get paid as a sergeant first class, so on and so forth. Another benefit is you get your GI benefits. All right. So your Montgomery GI bill, or your post 9-11, whichever one applies to you. But you will not be able to use tuition assistance. And then your normal PCS entitlements, you get to keep that as well. This is a PCS. When you PCS to your university, if you do a do-it-yourself move, the Army has you. If you want the Army to move for you, the Army has you. This will you know, be a regular PCS move. And um, back to the TA thing, because I don't want any misinformation to get out there. You can use your TA up until you you know, boots hit the ground at your university. So while you're sitting at home watching this video, yeah, you should be doing a discussion board and you should be using tuition assistance to pay for it. But when boots hit the ground, when you get to your university, all right, you need to already have your GI bill set up, whichever one you're going to be using. All right. So from here, this is where you access your Bible, your ADO information booklet. Okay, let me expand this for you. Let me see if that's better. Make sure you can see what I'm seeing. Yes. All right. So it's back up here. This is your Bible. Everything that you need to know is right here. This is not just information that I have. This is information that is easily accessible to anyone and everyone that's interested. So this is what I'll be covering. General information, eligibility, ineligibility. I'll go over phase one requirements, phase two requirements. And then after each phase, I'll do a quick recap. Critical dates. All right. I don't want to miss this. 12 June, the application window opens. And then Friday following the Thanksgiving holiday, um, that's the last day to create your application uh, for phase one document submission. And then the first Monday after 3 December, the selection board is going to convene. All right. And then when will I hear back from them? I got that question. You will be notified late January via mail per message. All right. That's that's important. You will be notified late January via mail per message. All right. Then we have the mission statement here again. I think it's worth reading again just because it the mission itself answers some of the questions that I get about Green to Gold. Green to Gold is an active duty option program and. It is a year a two year program that provides eligible regular army enlisted soldiers an opportunity to complete their first bachelor's degree or first master's degree. I want to pause there for a second because I get the question, can I do this if I have my master's degree? Well, according to the black and white here, it's your first master's degree. So if you already have your master's degree, this may not be the program for you. You may want to look into OCS or I don't know, maybe you want to I don't know, be a warrant or something, look into that. Those are totally different processes. But that's what this is all about. It's a two year program that's going to allow you to receive or earn your first first bachelor's degree or first master's degree. And then upon successful completion of your degree, the soldier will commission as an officer in the regular army. I got a question asking if I do this program, is it guaranteed that I'm going to get active duty or are they going to force me to be reserve at some point or a guard? That's not the goal. 
The goal is for you to commission as an officer in the regular army. That's the black and white from the Bible, <laughs> the green to gold Bible. That is, I don't want anybody saying that I'm blasphemous or anything like that. <laughs> All right. So uh, phase one, that is your, if I can just sum it up really quick, phase one is going to be your selection process. That's the selection phase. Um, and then phase two, that's your qualification phase. Phase two, if I can put it another way, it's going to be your waiver phase. That's where you need to be focused on all of your waivers. Don't focus on your waivers too much in phase one, unless you have a civil conviction, then you need to get on that ASAP. And then I do encourage everyone to get on your medical, your dot merv, and we'll look into that a little later. Get on that as quickly as possible. But, you know, don't overwhelm yourself unless you have a civil conviction. Don't overwhelm yourself thinking about waivers because that's not going to be until phase two. Phase two is the waiver phase. The board process. Well, how does how does the board work? All right. So here's how the board works. The board process consists of a professor of military science and two senior enlisted advisor, advisors who will review all completed applications. Select Selections are based on the scholar, athlete, and leader concept. So if you need any tips or advice on how you should write your personal statement or why you want to be an officer or why you should be an officer, follow the SAL concept, the scholar, athlete, leader concept. Focus on what you add and what you contribute as a scholar, what you add and contribute as an athlete, what you add and contribute as a leader. Because that's what the board is going to be looking for. Represent yourself well and just follow that template, follow that concept, and you'll be good to go. Once the selection process is completed, an order of merit list is established. HRC will publish a meal per message listing listing those soldiers selected to advance to phase two. The offer letter. The offer letter is generated upon fulfilling all phase two requirements. Phase two is the waiver phase. Get that in your head. It's the waiver phase. Don't focus too much on the waiver phase, uh, on the waivers in phase one, unless you have a civil conviction. Waiver phase. So an offer letter is going to be generated upon completion and fulfilling all phase two requirements. The offer letter will be sent to the applicant's company level commander through email. That's important because your company commander, I'm guessing is very busy, all right? There's a lot that goes into command and you're just one of hundreds of soldiers that they are responsible for, so. Nobody should care more about your career than you. So make sure that you are in constant communication with your company level commander and just inform them, hey, my offer letter is going to come to you via email. It's not going to go to your PL. It's not going to go to your platoon sergeant. It's not going to go to your battalion commander, your brigade commander. So, you know, leave them alone. Just be in constant communication with your company commander and just just make them aware of what's coming to them. I think that's vital right there. All right, then upon receipt of your uh, offer letter, the applicant must accept or decline the offer and then return the signed letter of intent. So you're going to return that onto your, your portal, your green to gold portal, where you have been uploading all of your documents. So it's not enough just to get the offer letter. Make sure you sign it. You accept it or decline it, depending on what's going on in your life, or you just may not want to do it anymore. And that's totally fine, you know, but just make sure that you sign it, you accept it or decline it and then publish that on your portal. Obligation. Applicants must meet all requirements in entering into the program. Applicants meeting all requirements and entering into the program will incur an eight-year service obligation upon commissioning. 
This will will be fulfilled by serving in the regular army for a minimum of three years, followed by five years of service in the army, either in active duty or reserve status. So this should be familiar to all of you who understand how enlistments work. The typical enlistment is four years active, then four years reserved. So that's pretty typical there. Then the waiver process. I'm not even going to get into this because we're going to hit this in greater detail as we as we go on. But just remember, waivers aren't to be focused too much on until phase two. Unless, I say again, unless you have a civil conviction. You need to get on that because... That's a process. And then I also encourage you to get on your medical, your diet MERB as quickly as possible. But don't really focus too much on the waivers until phase two. Then tuition, we already covered that. You have your GI benefits there. You cannot use, you are not eligible to use tuition assistance. All right. So when selected soldiers are participating in this program, they are not eligible to use tuition assistance. All right. So when boots hit the ground, tuition assistance stops. But as you're watching me, you should be banging out some discussion boards and doing some classes and doing some homework. And tuition assistance should pay for it right now. But when boots hit the ground and you make it to your university, you should have your GI benefits already set up. Class attendance. And again, I encourage you to go and read this for yourself. All right. Don't just take my word for it. Just read it for yourself. Get a great understanding of this. Class attendance. Applicants must be enrolled as a full time student, taking a minimum of four and a maximum of six classes per semester. Now, it's three classes if you're a master's student but for bachelors four to six classes per semester a minimum of 12 semester hours for bachelor degree and nine hours for master's degree students is the minimum all right so check out the 75 percent rule 75 percent of scheduled classes must be taken in a classroom environment note there's a note here i love notes Note, exceptions of the 75% rule will be considered based on course curriculum. I will just go ahead and let you know, don't worry too much about the 75% rule, and I'll leave it at that. Then we have some counterpart programs out there, which are listed on page 10. I'll probably hit those later on. Assignment. Okay. I think this is worth highlighting. Assignment. During any phase of the green to gold application, if a soldier comes down on assignment, it is the soldier's responsibility to contact their branch manager for deferment slash deletion of the assignment. Check this out, though. Once selected for phase two, the soldier's assignment eligibility and availability code will be updated to I. Officer producing candidate school pending. That's what that's what you are at that point. So you're kind of untouchable. You can still come down, but it's so much easier to, you know, get that deferred or deleted altogether when you are selected for phase two because your code is going to change and you can still attend your NCO courses and so on and so forth. Now, your assignment, eligibility and availability codes if it's one of these, if it's two, five, November, Romeo, uniform, or whiskey, they will not be changed by HRC. The soldier must contact their chain of command to facilitate this change. It is the soldier's responsibility. You're going to hear that a lot because it is your responsibility. You want to do this program. You want to be an officer in the United States Army. A big part of this is taking the initiative and taking responsibility of your career 
and being on top of stuff, reading the handbook. You should probably read this handbook every day. You should know it from front to back. You should be able to recite some of these paragraphs. You should be able to teach this class if you need to. So it is the soldier's responsibility to ensure the assignment eligibility and availability code is changed in order to be eligible. It is also the soldier's responsibility to adjust their DROs to meet school reporting requirements. Soldiers may not be flagged. So the DROs, if you're not familiar, that is, if you're overseas like I am right now, that's the date that you're returning to the States. That's the date that you're returning CONUS. So that may apply to some of you watching or listening. Eligibility. So let's get into that for a little bit. To be eligible to participate in this program, a soldier must, one, be a citizen of the United States. No waiver authorized. Number two, be eligible for appointment as an off as a commissioned officer in the United States Army under the provisions of AR 135-100. Well, what are some of those provisions? I'll spell out a couple of them for you. You can't see this, but I'll just read a couple of them, not all. Number one, be a U.S. citizen. Number two, be at least 18 years or older, have a minimum of a bachelor's degree from an accredited institution, um, meet physical standards, meet moral standards, have a security clearance, pass an ACFT, you know, just some basic stuff. And that that's number two. That is what AR 135-100 is talking about. All right. So just keep that in mind. Number three is be under 30 years old upon graduation and completion of all requirements for a commission. Waiver authorized. So don't worry about that. All right. Do not worry about the age waiver. I had somebody on this channel who is about to be 40. Right. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all. And then for number four, there's a, there's a waiver for this as well. Have completed less than 10 years of active federal service. There's a waiver for that. Remember, I had the first sergeant on who had 20 plus years in. She got accepted. Then number five, have a favorable recommendation from the soldier's current chain of command, immediate commander, and battalion level commander. So your company commander and your battalion level commander. All right, and this is going to be done on the 174R, all right? They're going to write a recommendation for you on that 174R. Number six, not be currently scheduled to attend an approved reclassification MOS training. All right, so I have a soldier right now who reenlisted to reclass, but and then wanted to try their luck with green to gold active duty. You have to make sure that if you want to do it, those that appointment is canceled, essentially. All right. So you have to request for cancellation of the approved reclassification MOS before you can proceed with green to gold. So if that's you. Make sure you uh, read this in detail and make sure you get on it as soon as possible because you don't want that to hold you up. Number seven, have at least 48 months. Let me hi highlight this. Have at least 48 months remaining from the start date of your college classes. Soldiers who do not meet the service remaining requirement for this program must be processed in accordance with AR 600, uh, 601- 280 paragraph 4-6 before orders are published. Okay. And then number eight, have received the GT score or higher. All right. So that's pretty, I think we, we have that one. There's no waiver for that. If you don't have a 110 or higher, you need to go ahead and do the fast class, BSEP, whatever you call it. And again, don't let that stop you. I had, to, I did it. You can do it. A lot of, of my, a lot of my peers did it. You can do it as well. Just make sure you coordinate with your chain of command 
and you'll be fine. Number nine, have a minimum cumulative grade point average of 2.5 on a 4.0 grade point system, unweighted, in parentheses, unweighted on all previous college work completed. No waiver. Oh, I'm sorry. Waiver is authorized for that. All right. Yes, because I have known some of my peers that got accepted into this program. They had like 1.8, 2.0. So that there's a waiver for that. Don't worry about it. But keep in mind that this is a highly competitive program and you're competing with your peers all over the nation. So to position yourself um, in the best light, make sure you're doing everything that you can do. But don't get too hung up on that either. Don't let that deter you from proceeding with this process. All right. So there is a waiver for the cumulative grade point average. And I think we'll talk about that a little later. Hey, make sure you're subscribing. All right. I'm going to drink some water because this is hey, this is tedious, guys. I'm telling you. It's a lot. But you can do it if you want to. All right. Number 10. Taking past ACFT. You got that. All right. You wouldn't be doing this if you couldn't pass an ACFT. So I'm not even worried about you there. But what I am worried about is that your ACFT. All right. If you got that beautiful 600, but it was taken in September of 2022. That's not going to hold up. All right. So make sure that you have a current ACFT. And then number 11, I think this is big here. Have two academic years remaining as a full-time student as indicated on your CC Form 104R, which is also known as your Planned Academic Program Worksheet. I get this a lot. Do I need 60 credit hours? Do I need to have my associate's degree? The Green to Gold Bible says nothing about 60 credit hours. It says nothing about uh, an associate's degree. All it says is have two academic years remaining as a full-time student, as indicated on your CC form 104R. That's it. I brought on someone purposely because... I knew their story. I knew that they had zero formal college. They got accepted in the program just from military training and military courses. And they did their JST, Joint Service Transcript, and they got accepted into this program. Not 60 hours or not 60 uh, yeah, credit hours, didn't have an associate's degree, none of that stuff. So there's a lot of myths floating around there. All you need to do is reflect that you will finish your degree in two years, essentially. All right. <laughs> That's it. And, and here's why I think I need to kind of walk the dog on this. You can have, let's say you have an associate's degree and then you're trying to do this program and your university does not accept all of those 60 credits. Let's say they only accept 20 of those credits or 40 of those credits or none of those credits. I've seen a lot of people butthurt over that. And I would be butthurt as well because I worked my tail off to get this associate's degree. And now you're not transferring it over. So make sure you are going to a university that accepts your, your credits. I think that will help tremendously. That's one of the reasons why Yes, this is a shameless plug. That's one of the reasons why I chose to attend Liberty University, because they accepted all of my um, joint service transcript. They accepted all of my uh, community college, all the school that I, that I did prior to joining the military. They accepted all of that. And they are a very military friendly university with an excellent ROTC program. And they were very communicative during this whole process, helping me out, going above and beyond during this process. And that's really what you need. If your university is not going above and beyond for you, you might want to rethink, reconsider that university. All right. But I'll get off my box on that one. But that's the reason why, you know, uh, 
you don't need the 60 credit hours or the associate's degree because those credits may not transfer over. All right, number 12. Obtain a letter of acceptance from the professor of military science or your PMS, who's usually a lieutenant colonel. Yeah. Into the ROTC program. All right. So the program affiliate. All right. So I think we'll talk about some of the affiliates later on. So I'm going to move down to 13. Have a secret or higher security clearance. I would say if you don't have a secret security clearance, make sure you get on that ASAP because, man, that that that's a process. I've seen some service members go through it, and it is a process. All right, 14, be medically qualified, and we'll talk more about that. The Defense Department of Defense Medical Examination Review Board, also known as DOTMERB, which I'll be calling it for the rest of this episode. Make sure you get on that. And that's what I was referring to in phase two. All right. That's your waiver phase. But in phase one, if you are focused on any waivers, it needs to be your medical stuff or if you have a civil conviction. Other than that, don't worry about age waivers and the family waivers and the children waivers and all of that stuff. That is phase two. But get on these things that take a while to be processed and completed because you're working on other people's times. You're working on doctors schedules and you know how they can be. And then 15 have no more than three dependents. And I kind of hit on that, but there's a waiver for that. And don't even, don't even worry about that. All right. All right. Ineligibility. Let's talk about ineligibility. Soldiers are ineligible for the program. If he or she, she number one, fails to meet all eligibility requirements that we kind of just went over. Number two is ineligible for re-enlistment. I re-enlisted for green to gold. So make sure that you are not flagged. Number three is you are ineligible if you are a conscientious objector. If you don't know what that is, most likely doesn't apply to you. Number four, has a misdemeanor or felony record of a domestic violence conviction. All right. So that's, you know, I'll highlight that. So if that's you, all right, it's right there, black and white. Number five is under suspension suspension of favorable personnel action, flagged. You don't want to be flagged. If you're flagged, all right, work on getting that removed because you are right now ineligible if you are flagged is under probation for a civil conviction or charges are pending at the time of application all right number seven has any adverse juvenile adjudication even if the record was expunged but as i stated in phase one if you're worried about any waiver it's this one right here all right it's the civil adjudications it is the convictions it's the violations this is what you need to get on asap asap there are waivers but they take a while so go ahead and get on that and again don't let it hold you back so number eight a soldier without a spouse and who has one or more dependents under 18 years of age is disqualified. But guess what? There's a waiver for that. Don't even trip. Just like Apple, when they came out with their iPhone and they came out with apps, they said there's an app for that. All right. There's a waiver for that. Dependents. Don't even worry about that. There's a waiver for that. Divorced. Don't worry. There's a waiver for that, all right? There's waivers for all of this family stuff that I kind of alluded to earlier. All right, so this next portion is going to be the phase one requirements. We made it. We are finally here. All right, let me kind of, hey, I know that was a lot. 
that was a lot of reading. That was a that was a lot. So thank you so much for being patient. Got to drink some more water because we're about to get into phase one. Hey, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe now. <clears throat> drink water. All right. All right. Let's get back into it. All right. So number one. The 174R, which is the green to gold application itself, this form is automatically generated in the online application. So if item 13, the civil civil conviction is yes, a waiver request for the disqualification must be submitted. How soon? As soon as possible soon. So in phase one, again, if you're focused on any waiver, it's this waiver right here. Civil convictions. Number two, these are the documents that you need. Your SRB. Upload a copy of your SRB indicating your because it has your citizenship on there, your GT score, your clearance, so on and so forth. And remember that this is appearing before the selection board. So you want to complete because it needs to represent you well. The number three thing that you need are your transcripts, official transcripts of all, not some, but all colleges attended. Cadet Command will compute grades from all previous college work completed and establish your cumulative grade point average. Okay, so if you did like uh, USAFI or CLEP test, Make sure you, um, you you attach that as well. All right. And that's here. If applicants received college credit by means of USAFI or CLEP tests, official results of such tests must also be furnished to this headquarters. All right. And then your. College grade reports are not transcripts and are unacceptable. And if your transcripts are in another language for whatever reason, which could be quite possible because we have a lot of service members um, who are in this boat right here, make sure that those are translated before you um, submit, submit your uh, application. And then number four, these are the requirements that you need for phase one, your academic summary. This is the soldier's calculated estimate of how many credits slash classes will be required to earn his or her degree. So that's what I was talking about, that 104R. Now, if you're at a good university, they're going to help you fill this out. Like I had a really good recruiting operations officer, also known as a RU. It's starting to rain out here. So I'm going to kind of like uh, amplify my voice a little more. Hopefully I'm not screaming at you, but I just want you to know that. So I'm not screaming at you. I'm not mad. I'm not agitated or anything like that. Uh, I'm just trying to talk over the rain. But if you have a good rule, they will help you with this 104R and reflect that you have two years remaining before you complete your degree. That's the key there. And then number five, dot merb. All right. So that's that medical. The names of all applicants whose application status reflects board ready will be electronically submitted by the green to gold team to dot merb. Once the information is received by dot merb, all right, this is what's going to happen. If you're CONUS, this is what's going to happen. Dot merb will send board ready applicants an email with instructions to create their dot mets account. The applicant will receive information for scheduling medical appointments. All right. So once you that's why I say go ahead and get on your dot merb so you can start scheduling those appointments. If you're OCONUS like I am. All right. Dot merb will send you board ready applicants an email with instructions to contact the nearest U.S. military medical facility. Inquire if that facility can accomplish the examination. If so, 
go ahead and schedule your appointment there. So it's a little different. And I think that's it. There's some information here. There are some contacts. There are some emails. But again, don't just take my word for it. Read this for yourself. This is your Bible. You should know this front and back. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get into the phase two requirements. Phase two requirements that 104R during phase two, this form must be completed by the university's ROTC program, verified and signed. This is when it needs to be signed by the soldier, the school, the school's registrar's office and the P, the PMS, the PMS or his or her representative, which is going to probably be their APMS, the assistant professor of military science, who's usually a captain or a major, will assist applicants or it can be the RU. Like, like in my case, the RU helped me. The recruiting operations officer will assist applicants in completing this form because it is a lot. And if you're not familiar with this, it can kind of be overwhelming. Soldiers selected to participate in the program must attend the institution that provides this 104R. So you can't like be going to USC and then University of Hawaii is doing your 104R. All right. So that's all that's saying. The number two document that you need is your PMS letter. The letter must be uh, must verify acceptance to the university and into the ROTC program. Um, have your academic status and school start date. Remember, phase two. Here it is. This is the waiver. All right. So all your waivers need to be submitted through a fillable DA. 4187 and must be digitally signed. All right. Um, phase two, it is recommended to submit civil conviction waivers ASAP. Again, they keep it's a big deal because that takes a while and you don't want that to stop you. All right. Um, yeah, guys, I think that's I think that's enough. I think that's enough. There's a lot there. There's a whole lot there, but you can do it. I wanted to make this video because I think that is critical. I want to help you in your on your journey. I want to be a resource to you. Good luck. Never hesitate to reach out to me on Instagram or YouTube. I think Instagram while I'm off is the most uh, responsive that I am. Because when I go back to work, I'm not going to be checking YouTube and all that stuff. And I cut my beard. I'm not going to be worried about that. I'm going to be in work mode. But Instagram, I'll be checking that. Um, and just let me know if this is helpful to you. Subscribe as well. Keep leading. Watch those testimonials that that we put out. Um, like I said, we had a drill sergeant on there, a recruiter, somebody who has zero formal education. They just turned in all their uh joint service transcript, military education and courses, and they were good to go. So I'm bringing on some more guests to talk and share. But if you recently got accepted, congrats. And if you want to share, hey, let me know. Reach out to me and I'll get that set up. But if I can do it, you can too. Keep leading, keep winning, and I'll talk to you in the next one.